too. Throw one up this way. Just throw it. They'll catch it. <laughs> When I sat down and I brainstormed, I had to start this speech. Couldn't come up with it. Then it came to me. Why don't I let this man introduce himself? started very early in life. His father, Earl Weaver Sr., was a dry cleaner for the St. Louis Cardinals, and it was Earl Jr.'s job to deliver the uniforms once they were clean. That was a thrill, Weaver remarked in his uh, remark of his time in St. Louis and could include his book, The Earl of Baltimore. I would walk into the ro uh, locker room and see the ball players, and my eyes would grow really wide. Weaver would go on to play high school baseball and was signed by the Cardinals right out of high school in 1948. Weaver bounced around the Cardinals minor league system, never making it too, uh, higher than two steps before the majors and was traded to the Pittsburgh Pirates in 1955. He only played one season for the Pirates minor league system and then he was sent down lower to an independent minor league team. At 26 years old, Weaver was no longer considered a prospect and was asked to manage the failing independent ball club. When they ask you to manage, you're no longer considered a major league prospect, Earl uh, Weaver remarked again in Terry Pluto's book. It broke my heart. For one season managing the independent ball club, the Baltimore Orioles hired Weaver to manage their minor league ball club in Fitzgerald, Georgia. From there, he managed the Orioles' other teams in Dublin, Georgia, Aberdeen, South Dakota, Fox Cities, Wisconsin, and Elmira in Rochester, New York, spanning from 1957 to 1966, respectively. In 1968, Weaver finally achieved his dream. He reached the big leagues. The Orioles promoted him to be their first base coach, which he served for half a season before being promoted to the manager position. The following three seasons could be regarded as one of the greatest starts a new manager could ever have. The War Orioles won over 100 games each year, made the World Series every year, and actually won it in 1970. Weaver's Orioles would go on to make only one more, uh, make only one more World Series appearance in 1979. The Orioles only had one losing season under Weaver in 1986. The rest of Weaver's career is a story too long to tell. BaseballReference.com lists his win as a, wins as a manager at 1,480, which is 23rd all time, and his winning percentage at 583, 9th all time. Weaver's success as a manager isn't only due to the talent of his team. Weaver coached Hall of Famers Brooks Robinson, Eddie Murray, Frank Robinson, Jim Palmer, and Cal Ripken Jr., to name a few. But his managing was revolutionary. In the book Weaver on Strategy, written by Terry Pluto and Weaver himself, Weaver states the key to winning baseball games is pitching, defense, and three run homers. Weaver emphasized a disregard to small ball, which consists of bunting, stealing, and walks, often stating what he wrote in Weaver on strategy, if you play for one run, that's all you'll get. Weaver also popularized the platoon strategy, playing two players at one position and switching between them on a game-by-game -game basis. Weaver was also the first manager to play statistical matchups. He paid attention to whether or not a certain hitter did well against a certain pitcher, and vice versa. 
Bruce Weber of the New York Times explains Weaver strategy. He knew that certain batters fared better against certain pitchers and that sometimes weak hitters were better against some pitchers than stronger hitters were. So he kept tabs on, among other things, how to teach how each of his hitters had performed in the past against individual pitchers of the one opposing teams. Weaver's bold strategies took the baseball world by storm and are now some of the most commonly used techniques by all baseball managers. Winning a lot in strategy isn't the only thing Weaver's known for. His personality is what made him a fan favorite. According to Mike Klingman and Peter Schmuck of the Baltimore Sun in 2013, Weaver was ejected 98 times managing the Orioles, the third most among all managers. <laughs> he knew the drill. Earl didn't want his players thrown out. He stepped in and got him thrown out himself. Klingman and Schmuck put an umpire that faced Weaver. In other words, not only did Weaver not have a filter, he'd also probably argue with said filter. MLB Commissioner Bud Selig even said, Earl was known as one of the game's most colorful characters with a memorable wit. He was also among the most loyal. I cannot list all the stories about Weaver. There are too many to count. From his ripping up a rule book in the field in one night in Cleveland, to him and former Orioles catcher Rick Dempsey throwing equipment at each other in the, throwing equipment at each other in the clubhouse over an argument, and his infamous quote of "You can't sit on a lead and run a few plays into the line just to kill the clock. You got to throw the ball over the damn plate and give the other man his chance. That's why baseball is the greatest game of them all." Weaver was as colorful as they come, and then some. Unfortunately, Weaver died last year in January while on the cruise. Earl was one of a kind. Most of his players would tell you he was a great A asshole, but he was almost right when almost always right when it came to baseball, and you couldn't argue with him. Weaver's had a lasting effect on baseball. Most of his strategies and ideas are still being used by baseball managers to this day. And while he may not necessarily be remembered for his success, he will always be remembered as the not so tall, short tempered, chain-smoking, in-your-face manager that loved baseball and football.